What's up guys, Hersh here, back in the video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an ESP module. And this is the 8266 module that I have over here. And use a matrix display just like this one to display any text of your liking. So as you can see right now, I am printing my channel name. So this is a very easy project to do. You just have to do the connections and program the ESP with the example that is provided by the library of the matrix display. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Okay, so for this project, I am using the Max 7219 dot matrix display and this is a four piece dot matrix display. So as you can see, it has four eight by eight pieces. So let me just show you what it one looks like. So let me just take it out of the board. So as you can see, this is a simple eight by eight matrix LED display and it is just mounted on this board with the microcontroller already on it. So all it is just uh, place it onto it just like so and it will work just fine just like that and uh, if you want to add more you can just add by doing the connection from this side so if, if you flip this upside down you can see that it has an in and an out direction so the data will go from this side and does whatever it does in the this particular module and then transfer the next data from the out to the in of the new cell or the board and that way you can just connect any amount of display that you like so it is basically a daisy chain system and then you can configure it in the software on how many displays you are actually using so that way the program will know how far to send the signal next up of course is our ESP model so this is a node MCU that I am using and uh, there's nothing much to say about this it's just a simple microcontroller that has Wi-Fi inbuilt this will be mounted on this pretty tiny breadboard for its size so just like so and this way the connection will be a bit easier to make and speaking of connection we will be using some jumper wires these are male to female jumper wires so the male portion will go this side and the female portion will go onto the matrix display so first we will connect power and uh, this can be supplied by a 3.3 volt outputs and the node mcu has two of them so one on this side and one on this side so first of all let's start with the power supply and the matrix display can be supplied with 3.3 volts and there is no shortage of those in the node mcu so I am going to take the red wire and connect it to the 3.3 volt output of the ESP which is right over here so as you can see and then I will connect the brown wire for the ground just like so and I am going to take the other end of the wire and connect it to the VCC of the display and then connect the ground to the ground next up we'll connect the data input pin so it is labeled by DIN so we'll take that pin and then we'll connect the data input pin to pin number d7 of the esp so as you can see it is labeled d7 over here so we'll connect it to the d7 pin as you can see now we will take the cs pin and connect it to d8 of the esp so right next to d7 is the d8 just like that and then we'll connect the clock pin to pin number d5 so d5 is a bit further so this is the d5 pin i will connect it to right over here just like so and if you don't understand it don't worry i have the circuit diagram link in the description you can check that out so our connections are now done now we can go ahead and program the esp and uh, do a test run we will add our e esp board extension so we'll go ahead and click on file and then click on preferences so this will also open this small window over here and in the additional board manager ul you have to paste this link i will give it in the description you can copy it from there and all you have to do is just paste it over here and then click on OK. Then go to Tools. Then select Boards and then Boards Manager. 
this will also open at the small window and what you have to do is just scroll down at the very bottom and search for this particular file the esp8266 by esp8266 community and i have already installed it but uh, in your case it will say something like this install and once you click on it it will take around two to three minutes to install because it's a pretty big file and it will depend on your internet connection and once that done it's a fully automated process all of you just go back or click the cross button okay so once that's done now we can go ahead and start coding the esp so first of all we need to download the md max library so we'll go to tools so we'll go to sketch and go to include library and then click on manage libraries and this will open up this small window over here so in the search bar what you have to do is type md max md underscore max so there are a total of three libraries by the md max so we have the md max 72 xx md max panel and md parola and uh, i will suggest that you install all of these now as you can see that there are a total of three libraries by the name of md underscore so we have the max 72 xx max panel and parola so i have installed all of them and you should too because uh, each library works with one another so MD Max 7072 needs to be installed for MD Max panel and MD Parola. So installing all of them will give you a little bit of work. Will give you a little bit of room to work with. So after you have installed them, just click on close and then go to files. Then go to examples and then find the MD Max 72XX library right over here. And then you can see that here is the ESP8266 file so it is named MD Max 72 access message ESP8266 so just click on it and this will open up this new window with the actual code that we need to upload and there are a few things that you need to change before we can upload it so first of all you can recheck your connections so as you can see VCC goes to 3.3 volts ground goes to ground digital input will go to 7 CS or LD will go to D8 and clock will go to D5 then we have the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library that was installed when we installed the board, the ESP board. And the major changes are over here. So in the hardware type, you have to, it is by default set to parallel underscore HW. So what you have to do is change this to FC16. So let me just show you how it's done. So just type FC16. And this is the type of file that works with the matrix display now here you can see that the max devices it is set at 8 and it depends on your uh, matrix display what you are using so as you can see by default it will be set at 8 or 11 for some cases so we are using as I told earlier we are using only 4 panels over here so we'll just change it to 4 and you can just increase it uh, according to your amount of panel that you're using to create a large display and once you scroll down a bit further you can see the parameters for your router connection so you will set your name of the router so you can type in your network name and then you will type your networking password which is whatever I don't know what it is and make sure that this is correct i have a lot of people complaining that uh, this is not connecting or whatnot so just check the connections over here make sure that it is the right name and the right password because if there is a slight test of error in lowercase and uppercase letter then it will not work now at the bottom it is the html code for the web server and the scrolling text features that you will use so there is nothing to change about it here so once that's all done you can just go to tools then select uh, the board type which is the node mcu 1.0 esp 12e module so just select that and then just click on upload okay so after you have programmed your usb just uh, take your usb cable and power it up again or if you never took it out or whatever 
and then this will take a few seconds to connect to the Wi-Fi first and then it will show the IP address on the display which is a pretty nice feature so you don't have to use a serial monitor to check the IP address of the ESP okay so as you can see now it is connected and it's showing the IP address the local IP address on the display so it is a little bit crooked but uh, we will figure it out so at this stage you can see that it is printing 192.168.001.006 so this IP address is actually wrong and if you put it in your web browser it will show nothing. The main point here is that the 00 in the last two this is, is not actually required. So the actual IP address will be 192.168.1.6. So if you print this then there should be no problem. And in my case it is showing this but uh, and it is different for every case so this might not be exactly the same for your display but uh, the router automatically assigns IP local IP to a device such as this one so now let's open up our browser and you can do that on any of the things so either a smartphone or a laptop will work so just go to the link and then just type 192.168.1.6 and make sure that this blue line appear that means it is taking this as an address not as a search thing or whatever so just click on it and as you can see the web page is now open and you have to zoom in a little bit so as you can see MD max 72 set message so we'll type the message on this box over here so let me just type a random thing and once you are done with that you can just uh, click on send text make sure it has clicked and the next time it will show the display it will show the text that you have typed so as you can see it is now printing my name on the display it doesn't matter how long it is obviously there should be some limit but uh, I don't think there is so you can just type in whatever you like on the box and it will just print the message straight away so let me just type a quick long message real quick And then once you're done you can just click on send text and uh, next time the so as you can see now it is printing the new text that I have sent it to it so it's a pretty straightforward process as you can see and it doesn't matter where you access this you can access it on a computer or laptop and make sure that it is connected with the same network so as you can see my phone is currently connected to Wi-Fi and uh, it is also connected to the same Wi-Fi network that my phone is connected to and it doesn't necessarily need to have an internet connection you can just do it without the internet connection because the actual functioning is on the ESP itself in the code that I showed you earlier so all the functioning is done with the HTML page on the ESP and that is a neat feature of the web server alright guys so thanks for watching the video and I will not say the last things that I normally say because as you can see it is already printed on my screen over here so please do the following that are shown over here otherwise I'll be very sad.